day, everyone. I am Matt Harrison, and you are listening to the Geary Cast, the Malaga fan podcast for all the Geary's out there, and as part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Malaga escaped with a nil-nil draw and a point from Saturday's game against Cordoba at Nuevo Arcangel. Not the most exciting game from a Malaga perspective, as they took 77 minutes to get their first and only shot on target, whilst Alfonso Herrero's goal led a charmed life at times. But if you don't play well, it is all about hanging in there and trying to take a good away point away. And speaking of hanging in there, hanging in there to help me dissect this rather drab game is my Giricast co-host, Luke Chambers. How are you, Luke? I'm very well, Matt. Um, a tad jealous now after the chat off air about how warm it is down the Costadel and I'm sat here with a hoodie on for a reason. The uh, temperatures down in the Costadel, Doncaster, has definitely dropped as Matt sticks his sunglasses on. <laughs> how are you, Matt? Yeah, I'm good. It's, uh, I'm on my balcony because my flat, it's too warm in the flat. It's, it's cooler out here. It's a bit of a breeze. So, yeah, I've got the waves crashing below me. I've got uh, some jet skis going across the Mediterranean as I look up. It's... Uh, yeah, it's a nice sight, and I shall be going for a run along the Paseo after we've recorded this for the sunset. So that is nice. But yeah, um, otherwise, all is good. I'm back to work now. So that's been a bit of a shock to the system after my summer gallivanting. But yeah, I could probably do with a bit of structure back in my life after my <laughs> summer. Um, let's go into There's not much news at all this week. It's been a pretty quiet week at Malaga Towers in general, really. But um, you said you're jealous of where I'm located right now, but um, you shall be joining us on the Costa del Sol soon because it was announced this week that our game, our home game against Elche will be played on Saturday night, the 28th of September, and it'll be a 9 p.m. kickoff, which I believe suits your plans to visit Malaga in two weeks' time. Yes, absolutely perfect. The uh, the Segunda gods have been looking down on us, thankfully. I think everybody who's listening to this podcast will agree how hard the system is this season. Well, every Segunda season, this all putting fixtures out two and weeks, three weeks before, it makes absolutely zero sense. As we were talking off air, Matt, in Primera, we had four or five trips booked now, not just thought of actually booked when they told you kickoff time. So... Yes, thankfully the uh, Segunda gods are looking down. Yeah, it's um, let's let's not forget the uh, controversial Merida incident, though that I suffered in the Premier. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all rosy and perfect at times, but yes, it was, it was a better system. Um, yeah, I I did quite like the the earlier kickoff, the earlier Saturday evening kickoff time, but you know. I'd much rather a Saturday kickoff than anything else. So I mean the nine. half nine, the half nine kickoff on a Saturday show, that's a Matt Harrison Malaga tour. A perfect day, isn't it? Yeah. Tapa, so. Morrissey's. Can I just check? I I said 9 p.m. kickoff. Is it 9 p.m. or 9.30? I think it's 9.30. Okay, sorry. I didn't double check that. Um maybe when you're speaking in a second, I'll double check because I, I was sure it was nine o'clock, but that, that's fine. It's just, just if you're going to that game, the Elche game, double check. Don't take our word for it. Um, yes, of course. I think that is a um, a, a daya, as we'll say, a Matt Harrison tour uh, with all the all the usual trimmings. AKA. Just confirm, Matt. It is a nine o'clock. Oh, there you go. Nine o'clock Spanish. Nine o'clock Spanish time. So there you go. Um, yep, looking forward to that one. Uh, we do have a home game before that against Wesker, so make sure you join us later in the week for the preview show of that game. Of course, we'll be reviewing the Cordoba game shortly. As I said in the intro, not really much going on in our game there, but let, let's give a bit of a shout out to a couple um, of our other teams. Atletico Malugueno, uh, Atletico Malugueno had a lovely weekend, winning 5 1 away at. Uh, Boli Deportivo Almeria, a hat trick from Chupete, who I think it's fair to say, Luke, we thought we might have seen by now in the senior team this season. Yeah, funnily enough, I think it were on the, the live streams of the night when, when you asked the question about Chupete. Um, I, I thought he was going to be a bit of a bench player and so on, but I suppose now we have got the three strikers. 
it's a very good option if our three strikers aren't <clears throat> aren't scoring goals come November kind of thing. Because Chipete looks like he's a real player, especially after signing his new deal at the end of last season, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely on the radar, I think, for the first team, is he? I think I think we will see him. I think we'll see him on the pitch before before Christmas at least. I'm not saying like you know, I think he will get a taste of it. Um, maybe maybe in um, a Copa del Rey game, maybe. That would yeah, be to be fair, would, yeah. I do think we'll see a couple of the Malagueño boys again because the importance of Atletico Malagueño is huge with this club. I mean, they're a step away from the first team. Um, effectively, if, it, if you look at it over this over the years, if it wasn't for our academy, we'd be way down the Spanish pyramid. We may not even be a club when you think about it. That's yeah, the pure yeah. importance of it. I think, um, again, I think it was on El Desmarque. I saw something the other day saying that we've got the most uh, canteranos in, in our squad, I think, because we've got nine. I think we're joint with Sporting Gijon, so it's, it shows how much we're still yeah. leading on our cantera. And I think I read as well we've got the second youngest squad. I think yeah, 25. I think Mirandez is... 23 years average but they always have young teams exactly they they like the the loan system don't they um yeah but like you've just said the importance of it once more if you look at our squad now with the nine you mentioned you take them out or even the ones what have left in past years and made us some money the yeah, the true. chain of production yeah and and also it was uh i don't know I wasn't sure who Poli Deportivo Almeria were. I, I wasn't sure if it was their B team, Almeria's B team, but it turns out it's not. It's because uh, obviously Atletico Malagueño lost in the playoff semi finals, I think, last year to yeah. Almeria there. So they got their revenge on the city of Almeria. Um, I'm glad that you've got that, Max. I've got a, a tiny little note making out that this is Almeria B. So you've just saved my, uh, my embarrassment. Oh, well, well, now we keep contradicting each other. I'm going to double check. Because <laughs> I think maybe they are at um, the B team. Or I they, think, yeah, well, if you look at that, two two other players from the Malagueño team who we can probably expect to see in the future is Rafa. Rafa seems a very good player in centre midfield, very much like a Ramon. And also the captain with the uh, the beautiful hair, Rethio. He seems yeah, to yeah. been around We've forever. We've been waiting for him for a while, haven't we? Yeah, we, we yeah, like I think, I think, to be honest, I think he's older than we think because when we did the little height, uh, the, who wore it now, uh, Romane's last game for Malaga, he was actually on the bench. I mean, he might have been 17 years old at that point, but... Yeah. I don't think he's a kid. So I'm just sort of scanning Poly Deportivo um, Almeria. They seem to be a fan-owned club of some sort. I don't want to really? want to throw to. I'm, I've read this very quickly, so I can't. But they do wear the same colours as the real Almeria. Yeah, and, that's the thing that crossed my mind a little bit. But I, I think you are correct. We we need we need to get um, some folk on from the um, Poly Deportivo Almeria podcast. <laughs> um, they, they do play at Ciudad Deportiva de Los Angeles, which is fun. which sounds very very cool. And then, oh god, let, let's do a podcast on these guys. We don't have much else <laughs> to talk about. Um, their nickname is El Poli, which oh yeah, that makes sense because I was like, it, it, I was wondering if that was something to do with the police, but I realized no, it's probably Poli Deportivo. But I would like <laughs> translators like, I think Poli you can say is like cops. So yeah. Um, anyway, enough on them. Um, and also, I think our uh, Feminino team had a good weekend as well, Luke. Yeah, so their first game of the season, travelling all the way to Lanzarote, which seems a hell of an away day at that kind of standard of football. But they played a team called Club de Maritima and the Malaga Feminina came away 2-1 winners. Nice, nice. Um, I was looking at Lanzarote the other day, actually, because I was looking, I just typed in, my half term holiday and flights to anywhere in Spain and Lanzarote came up quite cheap and I've never been so Lanzarote is a cool place. Mm. Udi Udi Lanzarote as well. Yeah, yeah. Up I'm trying to avoid planes for now though because I've I've actually lost my passport. Oh dear. <laughs> but I've got I've got my ID card, so I think I can travel on a plane within Spain, but I, I just feels a bit weird going to the airport and not showing a passport. So do we uh, do we have any idea where the passport could be, or is it is it well uh, no, somewhere? So I crossed the border from Portugal to Spain this summer. I think that's the last time I 
was in possession or that I knew I was in possession of it. And then this week when I moved back into my flat and sort of was unpacking things, I thought, wait a sec, I've not seen my passport in a few weeks. So yeah. I've not done anything about it yet. I've been sort of hoping that I'll have this eureka moment. I'll be like, oh yeah, it's in this bag, but um, that moment doesn't seem to be coming. So yeah. Uh, but I, I have no plans to go anywhere for a bit, you know, outside of Spain. So all good. Travel yeah. problems. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It, 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 it seems quite easy to get a new one. It's just a bit of a pain and a bit of a pain to my wallet as well, which is <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, we, we were obviously going to talk about the Cordoba game. There's we, we were joking. We did do the live stream on the weekend. This might be a short podcast. It was not exactly an action-packed game. So, you know, there was perhaps some more action elsewhere in the league, Luke. Do you want to sort of say what else happened elsewhere? Yeah, so the first fixture of the weekend is a place where Matt Harris and Crawley can't go, passportless. So Tenerife got beat in the opener 1-0 to Racing Santander. Again, Granada, just think, drew... I think I can go there. It just feels a bit weird. I've got my ID card. I've got my Spanish ID card. <laughs> Uh, Granada drew 1-1 with Deportivo La Coruña. Huesca lost their 100% record with a 1-0 loss to Burgos at home. Sporting won the Astorian Derby 3-1 over Oviedo. Racing de Ferro and Mirandes drew a blank at 0-0. Cartagena lost 1-0 at home to Levante. El Dense probably had a big shock when they were beating Almeria 1-0. And I don't know if you've seen the videos, but the Almeria fans really wasn't happy about this one. Yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, Real Zaragoza. They continued their excellent form and they are now top of the league with a 3-0 win over Elche. Castellón was absolutely hammered at home to Cadiz when Cadiz picked up their first win of the season. That was 3-1. And in the last fixture of the weekend, Albacete must be having a bit of a La Rosaleda hangover as they got beat 1-0 at home to Eibar, who are also looking very good. Yeah, it's um, Aragon are top in the league with Zaragoza and Wesker. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, I wrote down the, the league table, Matt, and just when you look at some of the names, the, the teams were we I know you wasn't on the prediction show. Mm-hmm. Huesca currently sitting second, Burgos are up there still, El Dense in seventh, ourselves in eighth, and Mirandes in ninth. So that shows the sheer strength of the league and how mumble jumbled it is after four games still. Yeah, lots of the names we mentioned in the top six of in the bottom half. Um I'd say the only name a few of us mentioned in the top six is Racing Santander. I think yes. a few of us put them in there. I can't remember who exactly, but yeah, very interesting. I did. Um, I, I seem to follow people that have links to Sporting Gijon. I did see a lot of footage of that uh, that game and atmosphere. I definitely love to go to an Asturian derby. It's uh, well, luckily that game was one of the games what's on Premier TV, which is a subscription but you can get it on normal normal uk telly which yeah, yeah. ironically we're actually on 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 saturday evening for anybody out there at half past five is it half six kickoff for you matt i think it is yes it is yeah yeah um, so yeah. and i'm guessing we'll be on there the week later because we're playing granada yes. on the friday night so yes so malaga are actually back on telly uh, for two weeks which makes a, a real change for anybody who wants an easy life watching football and can you spread the message to as many Giris as you can so we're not flooded with DMs asking for streams and stuff? Yeah, <laughs> Which is yeah. funny. We're always happy to help. But I dare say that has got to be the most popular. I mean, it's normally the, the old question of how do I get tickets? Yeah, so yeah, easy. That's... We always point people in that direction. How can I watch? We haven't got a clue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is the one. Um, but we, we did watch Malaga. Uh, this past weekend, almost almost unfortunately, in in many ways, um, we we brought the live stream back. I think are, are we calling it Giri Cast Live now? I think yeah, flashy new name, rebranded. Um, yeah, that was uh, uh, you know I did not go to Cordoba, so I had a a nice big bottle of Victoria with me and just sort of yeah watch the game with that. And you find gentlemen, um, let, so I don't know if there's going to be a live stream for the next two games. You can maybe talk about that on the preview show when yeah. you've made a final decision. But keep an eye out for those Giri Cast lives throughout the season. Let's go to the game at Cordoba. I think I think we should say first of all, I know you were there at the away game last season, as was I. 
there was perhaps because it was towards the end of the season and there was quite a lot riding on games then there was a bit of a tense atmosphere but you know generally a friendly one um that sort of friendship seemed to have blossomed over the sort of playoff months and before the game is Cordoba and Malaga fans chanting each other's name do you like this sort of thing Luke um I haven't got an issue with it I don't really understand it I mean I understand the a brotherhood and for any UK listeners it's effectively your team's next door neighbors in UK they hate each other in Spain <laughs> They seem to enjoy each other's company. Um, it, is, it depends, I think. There's certain, like, for example, I think from my experiences last year, there's a lot more of a thing between the Malaga region of Andalusia and the Cadiz region of Andalusia. If you cross into Cadiz, they don't seem to like us over that side. Yeah, they're saying it's a, is it an east and a west thing. Yeah, a little Where bit. Malaga and the east tend to get on and Malaga and the west suppose maybe a little bit different yeah i guess that's a good way of putting it actually but yeah like you like you just said matt i mean we've all seen the pictures from inside the ground and that you've got you've got cordoba supporting mothers sat with a malaga supporting dads and then one kid apiece and yeah i mean it, it's cool to see but i'm a football fan and i just want my team basically yeah i so i think last year was a bit of a education for me in that sense where there was, there was quite a lot of this even from the first game at Castellon when we were outside in the drizzle chanting for Castellon to go up and I think initially I think if I I think oh come on this seems a bit weird but I've, I've sort of embraced it a lot more now I think I think when I first moved here and I was told about the friendship with Granada in particular I, I'd sort of lived in Slovakia and I found this whole friendship thing mad because every club in Central Europe seems to have a friend. And like, I don't know, I'd get a train to some random town in the Czech Republic and I'd be wearing a red T-shirt and someone would say, oh, I can't believe you're wearing red to, I don't know, Ostrava. And I'd be like, why? Because Banik Ostrava are friends with so-and-so, yeah, yeah. friends with so-and-so, and they hate so-and-so who wear red. I was like, oh my God, like it did my head in. But here, I've got used to it now. I actually quite like it. It's, it's like, I, do, I do think it's it's definitely a good thing. I mean, that's one of the things where when we do frequently fly over to Malaga and stuff, you never feel unsafe with an away fan. Yeah. I mean, you've travelled all the way around Spain watching Malaga and you've never really reported too much. Even in Tarragona, yeah. we, Again, we hear the... the two, well, during the day, we hear the, the stories after Tarragona, but during the day in Tarragona, we, we openly drank everywhere. We... We had pictures with a couple of Tarragona fans. Yeah. I think it more later on when the the drama started, didn't it? Yeah, I, I've they've been like I'd say the two last year. Not that there was actually no. I did see some trouble. It was the San Fernando away game? There's yeah. a little bit, but you know it was sort of. I, I think there was more between the ultras. I think there'd been some history in the last game, in the home game, and and San Lugenio was a little bit ropey in times, but nothing. Yeah. But you're right, like I've been most places and never really had a problem. Most people want to just have a chat with you. Like the only one I've done this year was uh, Rasin Ferral. Obviously, we've only had two away games and everyone there was very nice and welcoming. And yeah, um, anyway, let's go to the on the pitch stuff. Um, or may maybe we should mention just quickly, we're talking about the crowd. I, I don't think there's much to say about it, but Zinedine Zidane was in the crowd as well. So um I just want to apologise to him. <laughs> I want to say we, it wasn't the best uh, advertisement for La Liga Hypermotion, was it? No, it was not. It was not Galactico stuff, um, fair to say. But um, the players that were starting for Malaga, I guess, I guess the headlines were, I, I don't think there were any big surprises here. Luis Mi started, um, we thought he would, but it wasn't certain. Um, Romani started in, for his uh, second debut and Danny Sanchez came in for Victor, which again wasn't too much of a shock. Uh, any general thoughts on the starting eleven, Luke? I don't think there's anything. No, I I liked it. I think we were all in agreement on the build up to the live stream that the team looked quite perfect for what were available. Uh, we looked for me personally. I thought we had great structure, especially mm -hmm. in middle of the park. Uh, the the three what I called for Luis, me, Manu Molina. Danny Lorenzo, Antonito on the wing, and our effectively marquee signing of the summer, Romani. 
Um, so yeah, no, no complaints for me. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's actually that, that especially the the middle three on paper looks like the perfect balance of you've got a defensive sort of midfielder in Luis Mew who's going to provide a bit of power and grit, Manu yeah. Molina who can spray a pass, and Danny Lorenzo who's a good dribbler and can run around a bit. So yeah, it looked looked great on paper. Um, again, I don't know. We we briefly mentioned this last week. Carlos Burga kept his place a right back ahead of Joaquin, which is seems to be a little bit of a battle. But I'm sure we'll talk a bit more about Carlos um, Burga so- shortly. Um, there's not really many incidents to flag up here, I don't think, Luke. So we'll just go straight into it. What 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 did you make of Malaga's first half performance? Did did anyone stand out for you? Just just the usual, the usual. To be fair, the obvious one being Don Alfonso Herrero. Again, he made one or two great saves. Probably just probably better than great saves, but to us, it's just it's just relatively normal. Um, <laughs> besides him, the only player I could say anything good about was Carlos Puga, who you just mentioned. Yeah. I thought he had a great first half, especially up and down. The thing what you get with Puga is you don't just get the defensive work. I think he bring. I even bring. Think he brings more going forward. Uh, the only player who ran with the ball with any intent, I dare say, in that first half. Yeah, he covered a hell of a lot. He seemed to be popping up everywhere and sort of, yeah, made made sort of. I don't know. He made made Antonito look a little bit anonymous at times because he was doing yeah. all the all the attacking. Was it was it in the first half he did that like the the mazy run. Yeah, the yeah. Run. That was I dare say that that was the moment us four on the live streams actually woke up for five or ten <laughs> minutes. <laughs> yeah, look, I looked up my bottle of Victoria for a little <laughs> Do you think uh, Puga's made the right back his own now then, Matt? Or I yeah, because I think I've said I'm I'm definitely a hockey man more, but I, I don't think he's absolutely cemented it. But yeah, I think for the next game he's done enough to say, right, the shirt's mine for now. And, I don't think he's quite pulled away yet, but um, yeah. I think they've both they've both got separate qualities. Like we mentioned, quite regular about Puga going forward. I do probably have more trust in Hakim defensively. Yeah, like trust. you guys keep saying this, and I'm not fully, I'm not quite as certain on that. I'm not, I'm not saying like I think Hakim. I don't know. I think I feel like Hakim does give something forward. I think he's a better crosser actually, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not as salt on that theory as you guys all seem to be. So yeah, I it, mean, don't it, get me wrong. Hockeyim were, were a slow burner last season. I thought it was going to be a fantastic signing, and I dare say it were ten games in, and we were questioning what kind of defender he actually was. Then he kind. Then he came into his own. We all questioned the Puga signing in January, and then Puga's turned out to be a, a, a good player. I hate the number three on a on a full on a right yeah, back though. Two, I disgusting. agree with that. Do you know what? That might be my issue. <laughs> yeah. I knew there was something not right. And also, weirdly, I've got this thing in my head and I don't know where I've got it from. And it was because obviously I'm watching the stadium more. So I don't see the players up close as much as you guys perhaps watching on TV. But every time I see Puga, I'm like, who's that? Because for some reason in my head, I've got it that he's got long hair. And I don't know. <laughs> I can't get this image of him out of my head that he's got long hair and no beard. And, I mean, if if it, if it looks like that from five three eight, then keep it going, Matt. Yeah, no, no, because he doesn't like, look like that. From, it's even in the stadium. I'm like, who's that? Um, I, yeah, I, I've sort of taught myself now. I think this last game, I've got his face in my head now because, because <laughs> like you said, he was very good. Um, Is that after fifteen victorias though? Like, will you keep that face in the head then, or maybe? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's because, and also maybe it's because he joined mid-season and yeah. You know, I'd spent the you know, I'd learned all the players over the season of the half, sorry, the first half of the season. Um, he's he's, de- he's yes. definitely improved, really has improved. Yeah, like he was like, you know, he started our playoff campaign basically, didn't he? And then he had a bit yeah. of a shocker in the first leg in Vigo, and that seemed to displace him a bit. But apart from that, he's never really let us down at all, actually. I seem to remember on his first start, he set a goal up i think i feel like he's put a cross in and we scored i can't remember yeah. what game exactly but um but anyway um i think you've mentioned him i've put in trying to find incidents to talk about in this game i put in like our running order um arero stepping up again again with some good saves it was that one where the guy clearly crossed it 
Um, and that was a really good save when I watched it back on the highlights again yesterday when he tips it over. Um, yeah. Yeah, there was, I think there was another save. I know there was the one in the second half. Uh, I think it's fair to say in the second half, Cordoba probably should have taken one of their chances, shouldn't they? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I asked the question on the live streams again. If you were a Cordoba fan, how annoyed would you be not to be taking three points from this game? Um, I think in the second half it was clear to see they, for me, they were attacking on our on the where are we? They were attacking our left side quite heavily. I'm not saying that they pinpointed Danny Sanchez out, but they're sent to be driving that way and flashing. I dare say five or six good balls straight across the area where. Maybe if they had a number nine, would have been there. Um, just said to be a reoccurring thing. Uh, I just don't think Malaga could cope with with the width of Cordoba. Yeah, yeah, because there was that there was that one early in the second half, wasn't it, when they sort of just put a through ball between I think Danny Sanchez and Aynar, or maybe it was between the centre backs. I think it was the centre. They was... had a one on one with. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. No, I, I just it was again, a big I... gap. And all... Yeah, I mean, I know it sounds very silly. The pitches are all similar sizes. El, uh, Nuevo Arcangel sent a big, big pitch, or Malaga kept themselves very, very compact, mm. allowing so much space. It was strange, but I don't know. I'm still not. I, don't, I think our defense is still on the summer holidays a little bit. They don't look the normal selves. Which is, you know, you, I agree with you there, but I suppose if we've sort of said oh there's not really much joy for us to take from this game but you could argue the most important thing is we got a clean sheet for the first time that's yeah even though some. we did look sketchy at, at times because there was obviously i'd say the big chance is obviously the the header under the crossbar wasn't it which to be fair to the lads it was a little bit behind him but he should have been I think the one, the one, the one for me, the one for me, like you've just brought Matt, is where um, the boy splits our two centre half so easily. It seems we haven't then got the pace to recover, and then again, thankfully for it, I mean it was a terrible finish, but thankfully mm. for Herrero managed to save it. I, I well, mean, if that go, if that goes in the way that we performed the other night, this game over, we won't get a goal back. Yeah, you say it's like a bad finish, but also like I don't know, you hear loads. Of, I'm trying to think. Maybe it's on Gary Lineker's podcast. They mention it about the aim know. at the goalkeeper's legs. Yeah, and, and actually, yeah. Herrero does like save it with his like knee, doesn't yeah. he? He does sort of spot that it might go through the gap. And I know a lot of goalies do that, but it's still to like he, he absolutely nailed it. It was it was a really I, I do agree. Like he obviously, when you're through one on one with that much space. You need to I, I thought with that much space, he might have maybe fancied himself taking it round for Herrero. But he must have just been looking and thinking, this goalkeeper is the bee's knees. I ain't going to be able to take it around him. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, again, sorry to, to uh, big up other podcasts, but on Gary Lineker's rest is football. That's what Gary Lineker always says. He says, why why don't strikers take it around the goalie anymore? It's sort of a, a dying art. It's, yeah, uh, it is. It is. Yeah. As, as, as uh, a man that grew up watching R9, the king of going on the goalie. I, I sort of feel I have to agree with um, Gary Lineker. Um, subs of, I'm just looking at our substitutions. Rocco came on, Aaron came on for, um, well, it was a triple substitution, wasn't it? It was yeah. Rocco, oh. Sandali, Aaron for Danny Lorenzo, Romani, and Dioni. Um, I can't say those three really shone at all. Not that they were like awful either, but. Um, yeah, the three subs came on. I, I don't know. Do we, do we have any opinions on the three subs? No, I I think we were in agreement that it were the right subs. I had no yeah. issues with the subs. But we need we definitely needed a, a change in the game, but it really didn't come. Um, I just think the second half was so so lackluster. Uh, I think the players coming off were the right ones to come off. I mean, for me, Romani, he had zero effects on the game. Um, yeah. I mean, it's his first game, not going to be too harsh on him or anything like that, but I can't remember him doing anything. Uh, strangely enough, the thing I thought we lacked was our midfield, which we praised earlier, but by no faults of their own, really. We seem to be uh, bypassing with our play. I don't think the three players in there really got much of the ball. I mean, Manu Molina, who normally 
his stats in this league for touches of the ball are extortionate. I can't remember Manu Molina touching the ball many times. I can't. Yeah, to be honest with you, like uh, obviously we'll we'll come to like Jumbo and Biznaga uh, shortly. But when when I was like trying to pick it, I was just like. There's, there's like, oh, oh, maybe, maybe I've, you know, I think picking Biznaga is not so difficult, but like, sort of thinking, oh, who else can we mention? And I was like, yep, yeah. don't remember him, don't remember it him. Really is. Um, it and really it's not is. like, and like the week before when I don't know, we sort of, we picked on Alex Pastor a bit, saying like, oh, he was like really bad. There was like no one that was really bad either. It was just sort of. But I, I suppose don't think, I don't think anyone did enough to be said that they had a bad exactly. game. <laughs> I suppose they were bad by being so invisible almost. Yeah. Uh, I do I do think that the the key issue for me at the weekend, Matt, as well was um I think it was on the preview show last week. I mentioned Everly something Malaga really needs to bring into their game this year is not to leave the front man isolated. Mm. Uh this game we did it terribly. Uh, for Dione, he never had anybody anywhere near him. I mean, whether it's Rocco, Dione or Castell, it's so important that we get the players around him. We mentioned again on the on the live streams overnight, we haven't got Roberto anymore. We haven't got a player who's going to run that channel over and over and over. We need players to get in there and help him. Dione is not that kind of player. And if he was, it would take his game out of. Dione is a cute footballer. If he's running doggies down line, it's going to affect his style of play. Yeah, and I'd even argue as well that, you know, it, it perhaps got worse in the second half because when Rocco came on, I just think he was even more isolated. Yeah. yeah. I think he's as mobile as Dione. I, I honestly, I know I spoke about him on the review show last week. I, I would have brought on Castell if he was, I, I think he was on the bench, wasn't he? I, I would have yeah, I'm, I'm guessing he won't fit for him not to come on, yeah. surely. I mean, did, did Chris say that he, he missed training one day or something like that? Yeah, I think there was some doubt about him. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. But if he if he was fit enough, I, I would have brought yeah. him on to, he does look like he'll run around a bit more and be and obviously I'm not we we don't know yet, but I'm gonna guess he's not gonna be as effective as Roberto, but I think he is a bit more like Roberto than the other two. I, I don't know. It's um, like when you mentioned them, Matt, regarding uh, when Rocco came on, how isolated he was. At what point or were there any point where you turn and thought Pelletier wants a point here? We 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 dropped so deep. Yeah, with what twenty minutes left, would we say? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think he was. Um, I mean, I made a note of it. Payasse in his uh, post-match press conference was actually very honest, really, and said the like. Um, I've got it here. That they were closer to victory than we were. Definitely true. From the twentieth minute of the first half, we were able to play more calmly with the ball. But at the start of the second half, they outplayed us with energy. With the free changes, we adjusted, but they continued to press and we lacked calm in transitions. I think that's, yeah, there's no manager sort of making excuses there. I think no, you've sort no. of recognised that the, they made three subs and I read in between the lines there says the subs didn't think, work. He has, he has actually taken some stick this week, Pelletier, based on the socials. Um, he, he's undeserved. It's, we're four games in, we're, un, we're unbeaten. I'm, I'm still using that term very loosely. Yeah, but we are yeah, and yes, we wasn't very good, but it's a point. But equally, like I think we said after the Racing Ferrol game, that if we can come into this league and try and draw our away games and win our home games, yeah, one hundred percent. Pretty close to that record. We had a bad half against Mirandes, and you know that led to us drawing. But yeah, 100%. It's, we're very, we're not a million miles off. You know, we're eighth in the league, like you just read out. It's uh, I, I mean, how, how would we be thinking? How would we be thinking? We've lost in Ferrol, we've lost in Cordoba, and we've won our three games in Loros later. We'd be looking and questioning how do we turn our away form round? Yeah, exactly. At least doing it this way, we are proving that we can go away and dig deep and get a result. Yeah, I think we have got to take some positives from that we did hold on here. You know, obviously, it was partly to do with them not converting some really good chances but still we held I mean, them on. yeah the, the the huge positive is keeping a clean sheet keeping that that unbeaten start going i think it would <laughs> maybe down more to look than anything don't get me wrong but 
El, El Arcangel is not an easy place to go to, and there's going to be so many teams going there this season and are going to struggle. We mentioned again the other night, Cordoba have been quite unlucky in their games, especially in this one as well. They yeah. do absolutely pepper the, the opposing team's goals. It's just they seem to be struggling to score the goals, but yeah. we, we could look back on this point at some point in the season and realise, yes, the performance was terrible, but it's a point. We would have lost this game several times in the past. Yeah. There's their striker. I think it was Casas, wasn't it? He looked, yes. didn't really jump out of me as uh But it's strange because they've they signed the, the boy who were on loan at Ibiza last year, Abolski. Ah, uh, yeah, they did, yeah. They've got, I believe it's Kuki Zalazar, who is I'm sure is out injured because I were hoping he'd been released, and I thought that could be a a lovely little move for Malaga, for former Malaga player. But um, I'm sure he's injured because he, he's a very good player. Um, just quickly on your sort of uh, Spurs connection, you got to see the Spurs youngsters. Uh, what's his? Uh, Sun Su Bell. Sun Su Bell. Yeah, I think yeah. the the only thing I recall him doing was sliding in like Paul Gascoigne on the back post, trying to get the yeah. ball. And again, I I think it was just that kind of game. I I, I mean, if we were sat here in a quarter of a podcast, I even think here we'd be struggling to pick. To struggling to pick Biznaga and Chumbo was it just that kind of game? Yeah, we should obviously we talked about our subs. Um, from what I, I don't know if I've misjudged this, but I got the impression, um, when Hanaro came on, he got a good reception from the away fans. Yeah, from what I've seen, uh, I think the most critical might have been ourselves, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never, I've never been not, not of his character. I, I quite like his character, I'm just not a, a big fan of him but um, I, th I, I think now now you say now you use the word character Matt I do believe that my romance towards Canado last season is more the character the, the off the field he did a lot of social media kind yeah. of thing for the club he was great in um in interviews as well he's he's like you know not to say like he's a stupid footballer on the pitch but he came across like more I don't know, like he, he seems to think about football a lot and he talked like yeah. he talked like a manager actually. It'd be interesting to see if he goes that way. I think he... last season without without going on about Genaro, he uh, he had to change his game up massively. I mean, I dare say he got four or five goals for us, a couple of really? important goals where the season before I don't think he went in the opposite opposition team's half. Well, he scored the first goal of our season. He scored the, he the ball header in the playoff semi-final. He's, um, oh no, he had his moment. I, I feel like I went a bit strong. I don't dislike him, but I just never, I never really got no. the height. He didn't do quite enough for me. But yeah, like he had his moments and, uh, you know, I have no ill feeling towards him whatsoever. And I hope it all goes well for him at Cordoba. Um, is there any other incident? Antonito had a shot. <laughs> is that is that how much we're digging? <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he cut in and hit it straight down the goalie's gallery. Strangely straight. enough, Malaga retweeted Le La Liga Sorry. Hyper Motions high, uh, clip of this. He's tucked in 35 yards out and it a weak effort. Well, I suppose it was a decent effort. Straight to the goalkeeper. And for some reason, Malaga felt the need to, to retweet this bit. I had to pick something. Um, I, I guess other highlights. I, I thought our gold kit looked immaculate. Yeah, it's the first time yeah. the players wearing it. I, I, I know we both own one of those. Um, I, I think it's it's really, really great. I loved it, first of all. But the more I look at it, I'm just like, this is beautiful. Um, well, whilst we're talking about kits, Matt, you've got a certain honourable mention, I guess, for Cordoba. Yeah, their, their shirt. The warming up shirt, were it? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That was <laughs> really nice. yeah. Well, I, but I I really like the shirt in general. I like the yeah. It's a classic. Shirt. It's a classic. It's very yeah. much like a, a obviously different colours, but like a, a La Real or a Let Bilbao kind of shirt. Yeah, minus this, when they use when they had them without the sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Cordoba warm up shirt. Yeah, that is definitely an honourable mention. Um, but yeah, I think I think have I have I missed anything? <laughs> I don't no, think so. I think, to be fair, mate, I think we've gone heavier than we could have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, let, let let let's go with our Chumbo and Biznagas then. As always, we'll start with Chumbo. Yeah, so Chumbo, tough one for all the wrong reasons. Um, I thought a lot of the players went missing in the game. Could have been so many of them, but I'm actually going to go with Danny Lorenzo. Mm. I rate him so much, but. I, he had absolutely zero impact on this game. 
yeah, there was to be honest with you, he was on my sort of dishonorable mentions, but there's, there was a few on there like Danny yeah. Lorenzo, a bit like you said, not not that he was awful, but Manu Molina was not quite there for me, but not that he I didn't really notice him do anything wrong. I'm gonna be really mean. I'm gonna give it to Romani. I just I, yeah, I no, can't argue with that. Can't yeah, argue with that. Yeah, no impact whatsoever. And there's a bit of me like thinking now we like i said it'd be quite good if he came off the bench at la rosalade and got experience that sort of raw and maybe that would have got his confidence up ahead of this game and of course like sort of injuries in that home game um the last home game meant he didn't come on the pitch in the end so yeah um I, i'm happy for him to start at la rosalade next game but to, to yeah. be honest matt i very nearly gave it to antonito again it's another player who it, just hadn't really had any effect but then i did see the shot again and i thought <laughs> to be honest if any of our players is actually going to be willing to shoot it would be antonito and yeah he, he, he did get the shot on target so he deserves <laughs> reward for that um biznaga I, I feel like there's two options here so i don't know if you've gone with any other honorable mentions but who are you going with biznaga Like you say, mate, it's one of two. And for me, it is our number one, who is Bidnaga for me. Alfonso, um, he kept us in the game with a couple of great saves. Honourable mention, like we've said, all podcasts for Puga, who I thought he had a great game. Yeah, OK, so this is nice and balanced because I've gone the other way around. Um, well, I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I didn't notice this till this week, but um, did you see what they call the player of the match in Segunda. It's the first time I've noticed this. No. A sponsor. They are the Hyundai player of the match, which was very Alfonso. nice. So, yeah, very I didn't know. Smart. I didn't know. I didn't know we had Hyundai knocking around with us down in this level. But, yeah, um, I just picked Carlos Puga. Just, I thought, uh, toss a coin almost between these two. And I thought, well, actually, I did enjoy that little dribble he did. So, yeah. And I figured... I'd given enough to Alfonso Herrero last year, so just to mix things up. But yeah, I think you could have gone either or there. Um, but yeah, oh, just just one other thing I was going to mention just to wrap things up. Uh, did you see who else made a comeback this week? No, enlighten it's, me. It's uh, of course it's it's our our lovable friend the Sheikh is tweeting again. <laughs> ah, yes, I did, I did. Is, is it all related to the blue bay blue bay shirt uh, the camiseta case no it's, it's he's just doing his usual he hasn't done it for a while thanking the fans for traveling it was good to get a point again all my support to the coach the coaching staff and all the players we will win the next match we will be back soon it's the front of the guy isn't it <laughs> it's the front of the guys keep doing this finishes but we will be back soon when you said uh, somebody's back, Matt, I thought a bit of information what I forgot. I don't know if you saw today at all. Malaga put some training pictures out. Uh, Ramon is in full training. Yeah, um, He was at Cordoba the other, other night watching, obviously. Yeah. The big question for me is Haitam. Mm. Like we said the other night, he played his 15 minutes against Mirandes and then he's been on the bench since and not seen a minute. You're thinking, well, what is happening with Haitam? Is he ready? Is he not ready? Yeah, I, I, I like. I guess obviously yeah, the home game coming up, but there's not much competition out on the wings. I, I would maybe, if I, I'm assuming Antonito is going to start again, maybe yeah. give him a rest after an hour and bring on high time. I'd, I'd like to see that. But uh, you've got to think of the 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 upness in class. What we if we can put a fit Roman. Uh, R Roman and a fit high time into the team, like that. Sure, that's going to take Malaga to a next level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, I think I saw a photo today of uh, of Kevin looking like he was hitting a ball hard. So I don't, I don't think it was an old photo. Maybe it was me, <laughs> but uh, um, I thought I wondered if he's back. In Kev training. Kevin is actually doing very, very great things this season. Like you mentioned in the agenda, what what we did say last week regarding the uh, the helping the young fan with the shirt. The man but he seems people. to be visiting every penya one by one and signing shirts and taking photos and the, the lovable Bar Humano sat him the other week. Yes. He's a busy, busy boy. 
he's a busy but that's what he could do with the injury to catch up on all his uh his fan ads maybe. his socials yeah <laughs> so, so it gives him a break from that on pitch stuff but um yeah i think um we will wrap things up there i don't think we've got anything else we need to mention do we no that's all clear for me mate we somehow got 45 minutes out of that which i think we did well there because this could easily have been a, a six or seven minute job you know i did talk about losing my passport and things like that just to sort of uh, cover Paul, yeah yeah well I, i'm definitely going to do a deep dive into them um, over the next week um but yeah uh we've got nothing to plug i don't think at the moment no no just the the usual check the preview show out which will probably be out friday morning i believe yeah preview show friday morning we don't know about live streams yet but you know keep an eye out follow us on the old twitter aka x um and facebook and youtube and the social things yeah but otherwise i will say thank you luke chambers thank you very much matt pleasure as always a pleasure as always as well and thank you to you guys for listening and watching if you're over on youtube and we will speak soon adios and vamos Maliga. although i hit the hummel bit then <laughs>